Well, how do there, people inside the viewerverse? Tis I, Captain of the Now, today, chums, I'm going to be hitting up No Man's Sky, and I'm going to be showing you the way that I go about finding ship parts. Now, Hero to, for You has done a really good video on how to find ship parts using crash ships by using your Minotaur, which is a really good way. You just scan for them, boom, up they come. Jason Plays has done a really good video on how to use navigational data to get charts and then find crashed ships. Now, crashed ships, I think, is a very good way to find parts for free. However, when you do go to a crash site, you've got the random chance that you might find a shuttle or another type of ship that you don't really want to scrap and you might not find the parts you're after. It's a good way of building up your part repository, but how's the quickest way to find the ship parts you're after and go straight after them? That's what my video is about, people. So if this appeals to you, stay tuned, I guess. So my journey starts over inside of game, obviously. So I need to get loading into game. But while I'm loading into game, what I would suggest is you think of the parts that you want and then jump on over to the Tinterwebs. And there's two different sites that I use to go about doing this. Let's just get rid of the game image for a moment. And there I am on the old Tinterweb. So this is the Coordinate Exchange. And you can find this over on Reddit, people. And all you do in the top search bar up here, you've got the Coordinate Exchange. Just after it, type what you're after. So I'm after an Explorer with glider wings. So if I just type in glider, because that's a part of the ship I want, yeah, just boom. There we go. So here we go. Here's all the gliders that have popped up in return for what I'm after. And that is the exact configuration I want, including the body and the wings. Perfect. I mean, there's all different types of gliders there. You can see this one's got the two sort of like discs at the front. And so is that one. And this one's the dragonfly one. It's got the antennae on the top. I don't really like the one with the antennae on. So, yeah, the one that I want is the top one. One of the first ones there. So I like this one by Bad Wolf. So all I'm going to do is click on it. Kaboom. And there we go. I've now got the actual coordinates. That's the exact makeup of the Explorer I want. Obviously not the right colours. So now I can just jump to that area of space and pick that one up. Now, if you don't like Reddit, or you don't use Reddit, or don't know how to get on with Reddit, there's also Facebook and the Interstellar Index. Oh, sorry messages are all popping up there but inside of here all you need to do is hit search on here and do exactly the same thing so i just put glider in there boom, and there we go i mean that's the dragonfly one that's one with the antennas on the one that i don't like like i explained earlier but that one is that's the exact makeup there we go so if i didn't use bad wolves i could use this guys yeah six wing fire gaming i guess that's the same sort of makeup that i like i could go for that one and that's also in Euclid. So already I've got two different models there that I can go after. And all you need then is a portal and portal glyphs. And I've got a whole video on how you can find your own portal, set up a portal base, and then you can jump all wherever you want. I'll put a video up there. And if you haven't got all the portal glyphs, there's easy ways to do that too, by sort of exploiting the, you know, the hazardous floor emissions from the actual Nexus cube inside of the anomaly. If you go to those and put down a base, there's a way to then jump back in and get the glyphs super quick. Yeah, so I've got a video on that too. I'll put it up there. Getting portal glyphs super easily and quick. Right, oh, so now I'm back in game. All I need to do is get myself to my portal base. So I'll see you guys at my portal base and I'll go put in a portal code. See you in a mo. Right, so chums, I've arrived located at my portal base. The base is just over yonder hill, and here's my portal here. I very rarely build exactly on top of a portal, because if you do that, people can't see your base when they come to visit, unless they're in your group. Okay, so here we go. Let's activate them on portal. Activate a Mondo, I guess. And now I've got a key in the code that was over on... I'm going to use the one by Bad Wolf, I think, people. So, yeah, this one here. I'm going to be using this one. I'm just going to be keying that into there. So here we go. I need a double sunset. Chicka boom, chicka boom. And a Rocketto. Where are you, Rocketto? No, uh, no, that's a wigwam. There we go. We have a, to we have a rocket followed by a pigeon. There we go. And next four, we got a sunset and a pigeon, I guess. And, oh, Jesus. Sunset pigeon, sunset pigeon. <laughs> and then, um, another sunset and triple pigeon. 
Oh my days, that was hard to read and then do. Okay, cool, well, we're heading through here. Let's head through this portal. Boom, you can have an eye out with that thing. Yes, you could. Health and safety it does not matter a jot in this universe. Heck no, it's like charging into a Hadron Collider. Here we go, bam, and we're in. Okay, well I've arrived at Katie at the opposite side of this lovely portal. It's not exactly like the most loveliest of weather. Now you can see there I've got hazard protection bars and all sorts of other stuff going on. Now, something that I would do at this stage is to then just hit the difficulty and change it over to the creative mode. Now in creative mode, everything is pretty much free anyway. So I'm just going to save the setting there. So any ships that I purchase, it's not going to diminish my bank. I can just keep buying ships all freaking day in creative mode. Lovely jubbly. Righto. Now all I need to do is either fly up to the station where ships fly in, fly to maybe a colossal archive, but they're quite difficult to find. Or if you've got yourself an economy scanner installed inside of your ship, which I should have in here. Yes, I've got the conflict scanner and the economy scanner. All you do is take to the sky, boom, like so. Then on your quick menu, hit on over here, go into there and hit your economy scanner. It gives you two options now. I haven't really played around with that surging stuff. That's a new thing. But locate trading post or trade outpost is the one that I want. Brilliant day. That should now give me a new sort of place to fly to on the old map. There it is over there. Takes a little while to spawn up, but there we are. I'm going to fly through the atmosphere where there's no friction. So I can get locked onto it a little bit quicker and make my way over there. Bam! We're on our way, people, to a trading post. Then it's a case of playing a bit of a waiting game on top of the old trading post to get your parts, but eh, not a problem. Coolio. Now, in all the other videos that I've been seeing, like Jason's, hero to you and pretty much everybody else, that are using the cra crash ship method. Now that you can actually call your ships in, inside of the station, what I've seen is people actually fixing the crashed ship. But technically you don't need to. Just jump into your ship that's fully working, after claiming the crashed ship, fly up to the station and change to the crashed ship. Yes, you're going to see a load of smoke and sparks flying out of it inside of the actual station, but you don't actually have to repair it to go up to the station in it. You can fly up in your old ship and then swap ships when you get there, even though it's busted to cack. I mean, I used to do that in the old freighters, you know, but yeah, you can now do it in the station. So there is that. Now all I've got to do is just wait for that lovely, lovely ship to fly in that I want, which is that explorer ship. Now, it might take a little while. This is the bit that can be a little bit painful, is just waiting for the right ship to fly in. I mean, you can type in on the coordinate exchange. Go. I'll just jump back over to the coordinate exchange while we're waiting for the ship to fly in anyway. And you can just put in, say, glider and crashed. Two key words, two key words. Bang. And you should find a crashed glider. I mean, there's the glider wings there. There's one there. Hopefully it's going to bring up crashed ones. I mean, they've got a couple of crashed ones up here already. That's got a glider wing there. But it might just take you a little bit of, a little bit longer to find yourself a crashed one. If you really want to go for crashed variants. So they are free. So you don't have to change your game mode like I just did. But yeah, hopefully you can find yourself a crashed one. Okay, cool, you. I mean, if you just put the word crashed in, if you just want to hunt for crashed ships, just put crashed in, and you're gonna, only going to get crashed ships. And look at them, there's, there's freaking loads in here. And you can do the same thing over on the Interstellar Index. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty darn lovely. Both of these sites, if I just click back, and then you get your search bar back, and you just type in crashed in there. Pow! And it's going to bring you back a whole load of crashed ships. Oh, look at that! One of my videos has just popped up. That's pretty darn awesome. So yeah, if I do find some decent ships, I mean, I don't really do a lot of ship hunting, but when I have, I have, I've usually posted them on these sort of places if I've come across something awesome of my own find, but I don't go out my way to do a lot of ship hunting. Maybe I should, don't know. But there we go, people. There you are. There's those two sites there. Let's jump back into game and let's see how we're getting on. Oh, it's still freaking night time. We're not getting much flying in. Now, you can put a save point up here and you can just keep reloading from the save point. So here we go. You can go into here. Stick down one of these if you like. Hit up a save. So you've saved there. And then if you see that no ships are flying in or well, you're not having much luck, um, I tend to like to save as soon as it turns to daytime. Make a save 
and then as it hits night time again, reload my save then. I don't really do what other ship hunters do and reload it every single time that there's you, know, you don't get it on the wave that you want. So I do stand here for a little while. I only do a reload every time nighttime circles back around or if a massive storm hits and you can't see for toffee. As long as you've saved it just as daytime hits, then, you know, things can be all right. And you can see when daytime is coming around by using your scanner. I'm in the way of the scanner at the moment. If I just move myself down a bit, actually, I'll just move the screen down a bit. There you go. You can see there that the daytime is coming around, oh, in about another five hours in game time. But for me, that's probably going to be, you know, about five, ten minutes or so. But anyway, people. I'm going to stand around here. I'll let you know when the Explorer ship flies in. And of course, I've got to buy three of them and scrap them. Now, I've only got one ship slot. So the annoying thing for me is I've now got to get the ship, scrap it and fly up to the station and then fly back again. But because I'm in creative mode, what I can do is just put down a base computer here. Boom. And just put down a really basic base and a teleporter. And then use that teleporter just to teleport to the station and back, you know. But sometimes you have to actually go to the station in a system before it appears on your portal list. So we might have to do that. But at least I can then teleport back down to this trading post. So I'm just going to build a little base. And if the Explorer flies in while I'm building it, I'll let Again, you know. the nice thing about being in creative mode is the power is auto enabled. So I'm just going to upload this quick base here. I mean, I might as well give it a quick name just so I know where it is. But it's going to be the last base inside of my list anyway. But I'm just going to call this Glider. And I'm going to delete this base after I finish doing what I'm doing here. So if anybody else comes, I'm not going to upset the trading post for them. So upload that. Chicka boom. And uh, yeah, that's that's my little base done. Daytime still hasn't come around, so I put down this base super lickety quick. And you can see here there is a storm rolling in, so if I wasn't in creative mode, I can just hide in here and get sort of like my hazardy protection back. Nice and easy and peasy, lemony squeezy, run back out and uh, just keep an eye out for the, the actual glider flying in and waiting until daytime rolls around and then using this save point. So I'll let you know if the glider flies in by morn or whether morning comes first. Yeah, it's going to be one or the other, isn't it, really, I think, people. But yeah, it's still not on any of the landing pads. Nice, but this this is where I do a reload because this storm is okay, really Okay, jumps. Well, it started to get brighter. I think the sun is slowly making its way up above the hill line. Um, and this storm hopefully is about to dissipate. And I haven't seen the glider fly in yet, which is... Freaking mental. I mean, there's that one down there. I do quite like these wings as well. They're really cool wings, aren't they? Because it almost looks like um, like X-Fighter wings. If they had the movement, if they opened up a bit, I'd probably go for those wings rather than the glider wings. I do like those. They're my second favourite Explorer wings. What's your favourite Explorer makeup inside of the comments, people? Yeah, sound off. Um, yeah, not really seeing it fly in as yet, peeps. Anyway... Now that the sun is coming up, we've got ourselves a rainbow as well. I'm just going to hit save, I think, at this point. And this is where I can reload from. Chikapow! Dundalee and done. And I'm going to do a reload now. Might as well, might not. Right, so go. what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to wait to see if it flies in inside of the first wave. Because it would be nice to actually pick one of these up and fly it up to the station and scrap it before I hit up the portal inside the station. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for, to at least pick up one glider now that I can go and scrap, and then I can use the teleporter system to get back here, nice and easy peasy, lemony squeezy, then onwards, people. So I'll wait here now until I see the glider actually fly in that I want, and I'll let you know when it arrives, and I'll give you a sense of idea of time. I mean, in to which be I fair, chums, as you're doing this, if you do see any other ship parts on any of the ships that fly in that you do like, you know, you can go and grab that, fly that up to the station and scrap it. It's like I do like droid wings. I could have grabbed that ship and took that one up and scrapped it if I really wanted to, just to get the portal on my portal repository. I also like um, the Viper nose, and there's the Viper nose right there. I quite like the box engines on the wings there. I could be scrapping all of these ships that I'm flying in. So even if you are waiting for the ship that you want and you're not seeing it, you might see parts that you want. And you can go and scrap those too. Remember, you're in creative mode, so it's not going to cost you anything. It's just going to cost you a little bit of time. And if you're already waiting here anyway, spending time waiting for the ship to fly in, why not, you know? Build up your catalogue of parts. 
if that's what you want to get into. I haven't got a lot of storage space to get into that. Might have to clear out a vault on my freighter just for ship parts. Hey, people, there's one. It's flown in, I guess. It just hit night time. I was about to do a little reload and boom. Night time came around a little bit blinking quick, though, people. I was only waiting probably an extra, like, five, ten seconds after um, I mentioned what I just mentioned last to you. Here we go, then. Make an offer, offer on life form ship. Negotiate price. I, it says to buy it, but you watch my units. Nothing will actually happen to my units because I'm in creative mode. Kaboom. I now own this ship. Now, I could just jump into my fighter and fly back up to the station, or I can just fly up into this and scrap it. Completely up to me, really. But you know, that's what you could do if you was in a crash ship, is just swap to your other primary ship that you already had near you, you know, by the crash ship. Anyway, let's fly on up to the station, and let's add this station onto the portal repository, and let's get this ship scrapped. So here we go. And we're en route. Yeah, okay, all right. We've arrived, located, and I'm about to fly into the old station. Now... This method does need a couple of prerequisites. Yes, you're going to need to have a portal, and yes, you're going to have to have all of the portal glyphs and codes to get there. Now, I would say Jason Plays' method of using cartography maps, because you can find the navigational data pretty much everywhere, is the most easiest to access for newcomers to the game. So if you haven't seen Jason's video, go look that one up. But to be fair, it still needs a little bit of time and effort, because there's a lot of random parts you're going to be picking up that you don't really want. This is probably the more direct route, but it does take a little bit of work to get to this stage where you're going to have all the portal glyphs, but portal glyphs are extremely important to have anyway. Now, when you go over to the scrapping terminal, there's an important thing that you need to do here. So here you go. You need to go to begin salvage analysis, which is the third option. And then you're going to, give, you're going to get given two options. If you hit the top one, you're only going to get the units... And when I say the units, it gives you a load of bits and bobs that you have to go and sell at the Galactic Trade Terminal. That's not what you want. You want this one. Extract Customization Module. This is going to let you choose a part of the ship to scrap. Now, when it comes to building an Explorer, it hasn't got separate engines. It's just got one massive fuselage. They call it the hull. So that's for the whole centerpiece. Now, you are going to have to salvage the left wing and the right wing separately. With Explorers, you can have different wing combinations. They're not symmetrical. I don't think anyone really likes the asymmetrical type anyway. But anyway, just remember, if you're salvaging, which wing you do first, because you don't want to have two left wings, because that's going to be crap when it comes to actually trying to assemble your ship. So here you go. I'm going to salvage the hull. Here we go. Lovely jubbly. And done. I've now got the hull of that ship. Now I need to get back down to my base... To, uh, you know, start looking for my next one to scrap. But here we go. Let's go on over here then. Lovely jubbly. Chickaboom. Now, with some of the crash ships that you find on the Coordinate Exchange and the Interstellar Index, a lot of people have already built bases near to the crash ship. And some of them have got teleporters. So you could always just teleport to the station and do the same thing again there. And after a reload, maybe the crash ship might reappear. I'm not 100% sure whether that's still the case or not. Yeah, and if you are doing the crash ship method that's been put out there, make sure you turn off multiplayer. Because if somebody gets to that crash ship before you do and claims it and flies off in it, it might not be there. Right. For you. Well, I've arrived located back at my lovely base. And as you can see here, it's night time again. But I can't really take advantage of that reload that I did earlier. Or else it's going to reload it to before I got my um, my ship, isn't it? So I'd have to make another daytime save now that I've done the first one. Or just wait. I mean, you can see there, my ship is now taking up a landing pad. So what I tend to do is just move my ship off the landing pad. Keep it clear so you can have as many ships fly in as possible. And hopefully, just through random chance and luck, hopefully I'll get another one of those lovely explorers fly in. I was hoping it would be a first wave and I could say, look, look at that, isn't that awesome? Um, but no such luck there, people. Right, well, I think the sun might be coming back up again. It looks like the night and day cycle on this planet is pretty quick, maybe. I don't know. Or I know it's a storm rolling in, isn't it? Stormy planets, bane of my life. I hate stormy planets. Yes, when doing this anyway, when doing ship hunting. Otherwise, I quite like the ones of all the lightning and stuff. I do like the weather effects in this. Don't get me wrong, it's freaking awesome. OK, uh, we've got quite a lovely bevy of uh, shuttles. I mean, look at that shuttle there. That shuttle's really quite cool. 
You know, when they add shuttles in, I might come back for this because I really like these wings. They look like something out of Star Wars. You've seen these on Rebel ships in Star Wars, these wings. Pretty nice. My theory as to why they haven't added shuttles in, though, is they done an overhaul of Explorers some time ago and made them look a lot more jazzy. I'm wondering whether they're going to do the same with shuttles before they give us the ability to scrap them. Anyway, um, but that's all I do. I just now wait for the next glider to fly in and the next one. Scrap three of them and then I can build my own glider. So I think you understand the actual methods to waiting for the next ship. So you know what? I will get the rest of my parts and then I rejoin when we're at the point where we can build our okay, ship. Okay, chums. Now, something that I really like about this method is technically you're still ship hunting in the old-fashioned way. You're still hitting up portal codes that other people have found, and you're still waiting for the ship to fly in, and you get that exhilaration when you see it flying in. It's like, this is my second one now, and I'm like, wow, awesome, it's flown in. So, yeah, here we go. I'm going to recruit, well, uh, buy, buy this ship, lovely jubbly, negotiate price, and buy the ship. And this time, rather than fly up there, you know, now I've claimed that ship, I'm just going to go use my portal up here. Portal up to the station rather than fly there. Saves a little bit of time. And yeah, uh, if you do find a crash ship and there is a portal there, you can use this method there. So here you go. And I uh, go to space stations and current system. It says it right there. It's the first one in the list. Chicka boom. And the warp away. Hello. And I'm just going to go scrap this one. I know I said I'd reconvene at the point of building the ship, but I, I just wanted to say to you, when you go into the building analysis on here, I'm going to extract the module, and this time I'm going to choose the left wing. I just go down the list. I don't go, oh, I want the right wing first, just in case I forget which wing I've scrapped. So there we go, I'm doing the left wing first. Chicka boom, got that. And then I can just go teleport back to my base. Now, after you've teleported once, because it's in the same system, the actual load time is freaking insane. It's so fast. So if I just go down to the bottom of my list, glider, and hit warp. Look, I'm not going to edit it. You watch how fast this is. And going back up to the station is equally as quick. It's super darn fast. You're looking at seconds rather than minutes normally. You know what I mean? Okay, thank you. Uh, going back to the station is faster than going back to your base because it does have to load in your base. Got you. Anyway, there we are, nearly there. There we go. Done. Excellent, eh? Huh? Done, dilly, and done. You know what? I'm just going to hit a save anyway at this stage. Boom. How much storage space have I got? I've got a little bit of storage space, and I haven't got vast quantities of storage space. Heck no. But yeah, you can see I've got a few parts there now. Lovely jubbly! And I've just got to wait for my third one. And then I'll see you back at the station because there is one more component I have to buy before I can actually build my ship. Oh, look, my ship's back on its um, landing pad again. Better move it. Okay. Oh, balls. I just saw my last ship fly in. It flew off over there. It's gone and blown away. I got all excited, people. I even hit the record button, as you just saw. Dang it! It flew away. Yeah, the joys of ship hunting. Joys and pains of ship hunting. But at least it's still ship hunting. It's still using the coordinate exchange. It's still using the interstellar index. It doesn't take anything away from ship hunting. I honestly think this adds to ship hunting, this whole method. You know, you can come and actually get your specific exact parts, especially if you're like me and you haven't got a lot of inventory space. I saw Professor Cynical's video where he's gone and got 10 of every single part inside of the game. I mean, if you want to get into ship building as like, you know, the main thing that you want to do now perfect yeah take a look at professor cynical's method because he gets all ship parts and 10 of them within like an hour it does include a little bit of dupery now but you know that that's a cynical sort of go-to isn't it so check out professor cynical if you're after a duping method to just get every single ship part in the game super quick but yeah, for me, I'd rather just go for the exact parts I want. I know there's a bit of waiting, like I'm doing now. But um, I, I value my inventory space, and I don't want to fill it up with ship parts. I've already got like 12 ships inside of my repertoire. Well, 11. I've got one free space at the moment, but that's going to be filled as soon as I've got this Explorer built. And then I might have the hard choice and task of choosing a ship to permanently get rid of so I can do ship scrapping in the future, unless Hello Games is kind enough to give us, you know, a couple more ship slots. Because I want one of every type of ship, and they've given us the Utopia Speeder, and also this Runner ship as rewards. I've already scrapped my Golden Vector. Yeah, mainly because it wasn't my colour scheme. I like red, white and black, and luckily a lot of these ships that they've given us are red, white and black in my colour scheme. Yeah, luck be had it. 
Oh yeah! And the last one has flown in, people. So I'm going to go grab this. And I'm going to use my teleporter to get to the station. Then I'll show you the last element that you need to do once you're in the station before you can build your ship. Here you go. I'll show you the warp time back to the station, people. Again, no editing. Here we go. And blink and you're going to freaking miss it, people. <laughs> Look at that. Look how quick that is. Okay, right. So the last step that you need is up on the second mezzanine over here where you've got the ship agent, which I think is over this way slightly. Yep, there you go. There's the ship marker right there. You need to go and speak to this guy. Now, because you're in creative mode, it's not going to cost you anything. So just pop into here. Lovely jubbly. And purchase upgrade modules. And at the top now, they've got all these reactors and they denote what class of ship you're going to be building. I'm going to go for the S class one. I mean, it's not going to cost me anything. You can see there I've got a massive discount anyway. Lovely jubbly, but it's creative mode. So, yeah, get a five finger discount on that one. Head on over to here. Let's go and scrap this last component. Boom. Chicka boom. And begin salvage analysis. And this time I want to extract the last one, which is the third option for me, which is going to be the right wing. Chicka boom. And we've got the right wing. Okay, then you go to this terminal, the one next to it, the one with the bigger round disc, and hit this up, chicka pow. And I want to be building an explorer, obviously, and I want to put in the left wing, which is the glider wing, I guess. The reactor core, which is the S-class one. The hull, which I would like the firefly one, boom. And then the right wing, there we go. Double check your ship before you do anything else, people. Because if you go any other further forwards on this, it makes it really difficult to edit. At the moment, you can still edit it. But as soon as you've done the coloration and you've accepted it, that's kind of it. Now, you've got metallic, which is on zero, and then you've got matte, which is on one. I did make a metallic one last time. There was horrible, messy glitches with it, though. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ricey was looking at my ship and it looked completely different to what I'd actually made. Now, something I don't like about the Explorers is you can't change the accessory colours. So you see the guns on the top of my um, ship at the moment. They've got a green undercoat to them. I would like it if I could change that so I could make them black or red, you know, to match my logo colours. But there we go. I've just made a um, pretty nice glider there. If I change that to white and change this to red, let's just swap it around and see how it looks. Do I like it more white than red or more red than white? I think I like it more red than um, white, to be fair. So there we go. We'll go with light. we we'll go with that. I think that's probably better. we we'll go with that one. Okay, it does look like I work for Royal Mail, but you can see here I'm more in red than I am in white. So, yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? So here we go. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be taking that as is now, people. So there we go. Go to return. And as soon as you've hit return, that's that's pretty much it now. Oh, hold on. I, I don't think I went and accepted that, did I? Oh, for fudge's sake. All right, let me just go through that again, and this time I blink and accept it. Okay, chums. Now, the actual assembly button is underneath where my camera was. So that's why I didn't see it. You have to hold down square to accept it. Boom. Okay, and proceed. Hold on. It's gone and given me the freaking metallic one this time. I didn't want metallic. Oh, fudge it. It doesn't matter. We'd have a metallic one then. Coolio, and um, add to collection. There we go. I've now got a metallic red and white ship. And I was going to go for matte, but I forgot to set it to matte on the second time I built it. Doesn't really matter because it matters. The, it matches the colour of my retro backpack, which has got that metallic esque finish. So I'm okay with that, to be honest, people. But I'm probably not going to bother upgrading this ship. I want to see where ship scrapping goes. And at the moment, my explorer is probably going to be the ship that I continually scrap. And I can just repeat this process one day if I do decide that I am going to keep my explorer ship. But there we go, people. Now all I'm going to do is, after I've done that, is head on back down to my base. And I'm just going to be doing a little bit of tidying up and getting rid of my base down there. And making another save now that I've built the actual ship I want. So there we go. Warp to glider. Cool. Sweet. Now I'm just going to head on over here. Delete this base. Lovely jubbly. And delete base. Chicka boom. You're gone, base. I guess. So now that doesn't scupper the trading post for anybody else that comes here and comes to the same trading post. There's a heck of a lot of trading posts, so it doesn't overly matter too much. But I know that people in the past have said, Captain Steve, you shouldn't leave bases at trading posts unless it's like one of your main bases or something, because it scuppers it for other people. I've made a save there, and I'm going to take the save point with me as well. 
And then, you know, then there's no sort of leftover bits of my time here, people. And there we go. That's my new ship. I've got it. It looks freaking awesome. And look at that. It doesn't even look metallic when you're on the planet anyway. It looks quite nice, to be honest, doesn't it? But there we are. That's my lovely new ship, people. Yeah, that's how you go about building them. And that's how I would get the exact parts I want. As quick as that, really. I didn't do hardly any editing in this. So what you got here was kind of real time. I mean, yeah, there was a few minutes in between waiting for this ship to fly in. I think the longest wait time I had was about five minutes total, people. Because it's it's not really an uncommonly rare ship, this one. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's not like a super high tier ship. And one of those that I got and scrapped was actually an A-Class. So there we are, people. Coolio! So there's multiple methods in how you can get these ship parts. Check out other content creators. Jason plays, like I said, uses navigational data and charted maps, and he goes and finds crashed variants of ship, but it's quite random in which ship you're going to find, and you might not get the parts you want straight away. I've seen another guide by hero to you that uses a Minotaur and uses the actual scanner inside the Minotaur to locate crashed ships yet again. And then there's my method, which I use the interstellar index or the coordinate exchange and go directly for the parts I want. But there are prerequisites. You're going to need a portal. You're going to need portal glyphs. And then there's also Professor Cynical's method, where you just start scrapping ships at random. And once you've almost got one of every part, you just go to duping freaking heaven and dupe the heck out of those parts until you've got every single part in the game times 10. And then you can build ships to your heart's content. So there's, that, there's quite a fair few methods there. Check out those other content creators. And if you haven't come across those content creators before, let them know that Captain Steve suggested their video. Until next time, people, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.